Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're talking about correlational relationships. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about correlational relationships. So, what is a correlational relationship? For starters, you have to have at least two variables. Variables can be anything that you can measure. So how tall you are, or how long you worked out today, or how often you wear your favorite shirt, or how many gummy bears you can eat in one sitting. Once you've identified your variables, you can see if the two variables are related. Now, there's three options. Variables can be positively correlated, negatively correlated, or not correlated at all. If the variables are not correlated at all, that means you're not able to show any kind of relationship at all between the two variables. If variables are positively correlated, that means both variables increase or both variables decrease. For instance, they can both increase, like um, the older you get, the more books you've read or the longer you spend growing out your hair, the longer it'll grow. Or they can both decrease, like the less time you spend studying, the lower grades you'll probably earn. Or the less time you spend working out, the lower your overall level of fitness. What's important is that both variables are going in the same direction, either both going up or both going down. If the variables go in opposite directions, meaning the measurement of one goes down as the other one goes up, that's a negative correlation. So say the more you sleep, the less tired you are. Or the more you write, the less ink you have left in your pen. They go in opposite directions. What's important to remember about correlational relationships is that just because there's a relationship doesn't necessarily mean that one causes the other. A famous example is that there's an increase in ice cream sales, there's a corresponding increase in shark attacks. The more people eat ice cream, the more people get attacked by sharks. Now don't worry, it's not that eating ice cream is directly causing the shark attacks. Right? <laughs> is this something else is going on that's impacting your data? In this case, it's temperature. There are more people at the beach to be attacked by sharks when it's summer, and there's an increase in ice cream sales when it's warm outside in summer. The extra thing that impacts both variables is called a confounding variable. Some things, even we as humans, can perceive a relationship that isn't there at all. So say you have a lucky shirt, and every time you wear it, you always get an A on your test. You could be getting those good grades because you aren't taking classes that challenge you. Or maybe you're just unconsciously wearing the shirt when you know you've studied really hard. Or maybe you have a teacher who's grading you on your fashion sense. Uh, when you have this kind of superstitious or imagined relationship between two variables, we call that an illusory correlation. It's just an illusion. So remember, when you're looking at your data, just because there's a relationship between two things, that doesn't mean that one causes the other. There is a way we can find out if one variable causes the other. But to find out all about it, you'll have to watch another video or <laughs> watch our latest video here on Psy vs. Psy. Make sure you like, subscribe, and do all those fun YouTube things. And until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.